Welcome. Obviously, thank you very much for joining us. Rusty, Cow and Nunny. Really appreciate your time. Um, obviously, we're going to discuss the 2015-2016 season. Our debut season in the National League. Um, obviously, Cal, we touched on the year we got promoted. What was the difference for you guys coming back? Because obviously you played a massive part in the promotion year and you played a massive part in the years previous to the pre-season gearing up for the National League. Um, I think everything just got stepped up a little bit. Um, obviously, we brought in like, some, some good quality players. Um, and I remember we didn't sign Dorian Howley till like quite late in pre-season, right? Yeah. I remember the first day they came in and it was like, it was just a different standard from what we've been used to for the last few years. Even just in training, you've seen the way they're playing, they're sharper, a bit quicker, a bit more intelligent and stuff. I can't remember too many pre-season features. I do remember playing Ebbsfleet and just felt, I don't know, just felt like we were a bit of a step above them. I know it's only pre-season, but I know we won and it felt like, I don't know, it felt like a good win and it felt like we were better than that level, if you know what I mean. I know we've been yeah. promoted, so probably psychologically you're thinking like we, we've earned the right to kind of be where we are. But they still had a decent team. Um, obviously they had good money, some good players. Um, but coming into it, I remember physically I wasn't ready because after breaking my wrist and that, I just the summer was a bit frustrating because I couldn't, couldn't get in the gym like I would have wanted to. So it took a bit of time. Um, but yeah, I think we just got a few more men in the building, um, from what I can remember. Rusty, obviously we brought in early on, like you touched on, Connor Clifford and Billy Clifford, and you'd know them from Chelsea. And I have to say, working with Billy Clifford and Connor Clifford for the first time, I honestly thought we've signed some unbelievable quality. Yeah, those two had played together for a long time. So they um, they were both in the academy. Like Connor signed at I think sixteen, but he'd been like coming over from Ireland since he was like fourteen. I remember Connor coming over when I was still there. So he'd been coming over for ages. And him and Billy and good friends with Josh McEachran as well. Those three were like going through those academy teams were like unplayable. So they have a they had a really good relationship playing together. Obviously, I was like excited that we'd signed them because I was thinking, right, okay, I know what Billy can do, and I know he's like from from the conference south what we were in. I know he was different to players at that level. He could do things that I don't think many people could do, and it was a yeah. I think he was he was different. So I was excited. I was thinking, right, okay, we can start playing some good football here, like definitely. But am I right in thinking our first game pre-season was against St Albans? Yeah. And I don't think we had any signings at that point. It was it was not tough for us as a management team. Obviously, Ian was still in charge at this stage, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. I just remember thinking, right, even though we were playing this game, I was thinking, right, this is no nowhere near what this team's going to look like by the end of pre-season. I think through the games, it just changed so much during that pre-season spell. It was tough, obviously. We were new to the level and we needed to, obviously, we had a good... Good group, good nucleus. You threw a massive part of that. Um, but we knew that we needed to improve on our on our squad from the previous year. And it's always tough because you're the newcomers and signing personnel. Yeah, you have to be patient. And like you alluded to, Cal, we brought in Howley and Dolly mid to late pre-season mm. because obviously they're still flirting with the likes of Dagenham and other clubs that were trying to court them. So, yeah, I think it was a little bit of a disjointed pre-season because we weren't had the luxury of having the 12-14 nucleus to work from the offset to set up patterns and so on and so forth to give us the best start. Um, for you, Nunny, standards, what do you feel like? When we started getting in the third, four week, fourth week of pre-season, we started to nail down squads. Did you feel there was a difference? Yeah, so the, the team that we had or like the core that we had going into the start of pre-season was we had a, a like such a togetherness that we was like, the worst comes to the worst. If this is all we've got, 
we'll, we've got enough about us to battle through, even if the quality might not be there. We've got enough about us that we'd work harder than anyone else. We'd be more together than anyone else. Um, and then I remember the first couple of weeks, she was thinking, oh, are we going to sign anyone? Like, we, need, we do need that little bit. And then I remember Billy, and Con- Billy coming first and he'd done a training session and he was unbelievable. And I remember saying to you, I was like, who is this fella? And then Rusty was buzz- giving him massages and buzzing off him. <laughs> um, I was like, how are, we, how are we getting him? Like, he was that good. Um, and then a week later, Connor come and we was like, he's just as good. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, the, the last uh, bit was when Dowie and Howley turned up. I remember we'd done a shooting drill and Dowie had pinged four or five in the top bin from a shooting drill and he was sent a half. And you're like, yeah, actually, the standard is like... This, I've, this, I've only ever seen Cal do that. There's another person who can do it. I, see you there. I can see your lip going. <laughs> <laughs> I can score too. <laughs> but when, when, they, when Howley and... Uh, Dowie come in, I say Billy and Connor, them four were the main ones that they do things in training that you were like, I didn't think anyone was going to do that. And we really thought then, personally and as a team, we actually need to raise our game to get to their level. I was just touching on that. I said, I remember having conversations with Ian and Maz, and it was like, wow, we actually have to deliver now on sessions. And that's not. Not disrespectful to you guys, trust me, because you've had unbelievable careers. But when you get up to the National League, in the South, you're all doing similar things, isn't you? You're all doing similar things in terms of your Tuesday, Thursdays. Your Tuesdays, if you ain't got a game, you're doing a bit, you're putting a bit of work in. Thursdays, you're doing your prep. Do you think the National League was better at Boreham Wood? That I'll have to say that the training that we did at Boreham Wood, I don't think has, I've had that in any other club. No, I agree. Well, I appreciate that. On the Tuesday, Thursdays, like it was, yeah, it was by far better than what I had before and after. Listen, I, I can't thank you guys enough. Maz will be the same, so will Ian. I just think that it was the organisational side was so much more intent. And no disrespect, we'll allude to it as we go on. The 10th, 11th game in the season, we actually changed to full time because we felt we weren't doing enough. There wasn't enough hours in the, in the week to try and put in and implement stuff. Um, what was your thoughts? Because obviously, Cal, you played in it before. With Tamworth, was it? Yeah, um, yeah, Tamworth and a few games at Luton. So you had a bit of a knowledge about it. Yeah. What, what's your, what was your, all of your sort of impression of going into the National League in terms of starting it? Where did you think we could finish? Where did you think we could get to? What was sort of your impression of that? I was excited, obviously, playing bigger grounds, better grounds. When you look at it, you had, like, Cheltenham, Tranmere, Grimsby, Lincoln. Like, two of them are in League One now. You know, like, proper stadiums and that. Like, um, And, yeah, just to kind of test ourselves, like you said, I played a, few, a handful of games, not enough to, like, not even half a season. But, like, I'd had a bit of a taster and stuff, but that was different. Like, when I went to Luton, I was a kid. They'd just come down from League Two. The expectation was massive. Um, and it's a different kind of pressure. Um, but, again, I think it'd be good, like, it was good for us to test ourselves just to see where we come up. Do you know what I mean? If, we, yeah. if, we, if we we're good enough, do you know what I mean? Because until you kind of get to whatever level, you, you, you don't know. You might think you're good enough or you might not think you're good enough. So, good to get underway. Um and yeah, kind of see where see where we see where we were. Yeah, yeah. I um was quite like focused to show that I could I was good enough. Like I'd been at Stevenage as a number two when I was a lot younger, sort of nineteen twenty, and watched the level. Never played played like the old FA Cup qualifying game or whatever for Stevenage, but never played a, a it was a conference there. Never played a conference game. And I remember when I left there, the manager at the time was telling me that you'll never be good enough to play at this level and you're just going to be a decent rhyming keeper. So I remember, like, as much as I hated that at the time, that was always going, oh, you know what, I'm going to show you that I can play at this level. Yeah. And so that pre-season, I did a little bit more, <laughs> put it that way. Because we also brought in Preston, didn't we? Yeah, but Preston wasn't the first. You brought in um, the lad who you had before, El- Elvis. 
that would be something, yeah, for initial first bit. Because I think you wanted to look at him, and I was—I knew you were going to sign another goalkeeper because obviously you can't go into the next step up with just with just one goalkeeper as we did in the Conference South. Especially with the transfer window, Rusty. So for the first yeah. year, yeah. we were going up, and we was we were sort of tied down to a transfer window. So yeah. it wasn't anything other than like now, I've, I've got one goalkeeper in the building. The yeah. reason why, if you pick up the phone to you, whoever, you get one in the building within two days. But the fact that we were going into the National League with a transfer window that we've never had before, we felt we needed a, a second goalkeeper. Yeah, of course. And I remember thinking, right, OK, I know this is going to come. And I know I haven't proved myself at this level. So I was thinking, right, I've got to be ready. And when you brought Elvis in, I was quite happy because Elvis had obviously done quite well at the club before. But as we trained together, I was thinking, yeah, I, I'm, I can play here. I'll play here. Yeah, and yeah. then he went <laughs> I was thinking, yeah. right, back to square one. And then obviously uh, Preston signed. And I was thinking, right, this is going to be a, like a big challenge. I've known Preston for years and I know what he's capable of. And I was thinking, right, this is going to, this can be difficult. But I still back myself that, you know, if I, if I get a good run, I can stay in the team. So yeah. um, I thought that it was going to be tough, but I was just going to stay whatever. I was never going to throw my toys out of the ground. I always wanted to see what this year happened, what happened in that year anyway. Of course. Nani, remember the first game, opening game of the season? Yeah. Um, I felt that at the start, I think because no one knew us in that level, we actually did all right. And three, I, three losses in the first four games. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> it was decent. Now, you made the first game. We've done all right. We won the first game. I thought we played right all those game. games. So, we, we first game was Halifax. Yeah. We spanked them. What's, and we spanked them 3 1. Yeah. yeah. They only had one shot, the penalty. Yeah. I remember it so clearly. And I remember me and, me and Maz done a report on them, and we were like, we. we I think we've got a chance here. And it's it's not a gauger because it's your first game, but it starts you on a good little run. Yeah. And I thought, I remember it, Shakes, he scored. Because he scored in every opening game for us for the last three years. From a long whack, that one. <laughs> yeah, from a long whack from you. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, yeah I, I remember clearly from that day, uh, I don't know who gave it to me, but I tried to get out of my feet to hit a longer pass and the forwards shut me down and blocked it. And I kind of was thinking, all right, I ain't going to have as much time as you would have in the conference south. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm going to have to do things a bit quicker and a bit sharper or just be, just be a bit more streetwise. You're like, it's not always going to be on to get the ball out your feet and look for a pass. Sometimes you've got to see who you're up against. Do you know what I mean? Like early doors in the game because they're all players that we wouldn't have known. You know, conference south, everyone kind of knows everyone. There's not really many surprises. The unknown, like Nunny touched on, they don't know us. But the, the, the problem I have with that is I didn't know them. Yeah. Definitely. Them. Maz didn't know them and that was the thing where we're trying to sell it to you guys that they're this this and this but theoretically I've watched one game yeah. whereas you'd know against St Albans the Edgefleets the Maidenheads at the time the Suttons in the Conference South where you'd go oh we're playing against Dundas yeah. we're playing against May whoever it may be up top you'd all go oh well he does this this and this so the unknown I think worked on both sides do you remember the next run of three losses yeah, we lost at Eastleigh, didn't we, on the Tuesday? Yeah. yeah I yeah. thought we played really well and then conceded in the last minute. Yeah. The guy that used to play for Constable. Yeah, James Constable. It was a poor goal. And you think, you look at that and you go, would you take from your first entry into the National League to play a Halifax, who were a league side, who were comfortable, good in the National League. Then Eastleigh, in fairness, went up the year before, I believe. Yeah, they had a lot of money, didn't they? They had a lot of money. They had a good bit of back in. And you're thinking, you're going to take four points out of your first two games, then you're going to concede with that late on from James Constable. Then the big trip up to Gateshead. Remember first it? Trip. Yeah. Two minibuses. Two minibuses. Roasting couldn't have been hotter on the day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, again, I think like one of them ones, like, you're thinking we've come off, we've done all right, but we lost again. Yeah. It was uh, early wake up call. Obviously, looking back now as players, when you're in it, obviously you use this management team and the staff. Alarm bells are then starting to ring, thinking there's no point in playing well and losing every week. Like you yeah. might get applauded and that, but 
we're not just here to take part, do you know what I mean? Obviously, we want to compete and stay in the league. So I think at the time, you know, as a player, you, you've got a different point of view and then reflecting on it now and even just talking about it now, like, and then the older you get more experienced, like, I'd, I'd, I like playing good football, but I'd play crap every week and win. Like, you, there's no doubt about that. And that's what it was. Same. Yeah, like you said, the next three <laughs> games, no we win. Won, when then it was Forest Green at home, we lost 1-0. And no disrespect to the teams we're playing, Eastleigh, Gateshead and Forest Green. We'll What's that, matey? we we'll beat Forest Green. Did we beat Forest Green? We lost 1-0. That's 1-0. No, Angelo scored for Shakesy. The wrong season. No, that was the season after. Was it? Yeah. When we done the full, that was the full <laughs> press. Yeah, 100%. And then that, yeah, that was the okay. season after. Shakesy just never gets older, so every year could be the same year. <laughs> Benjamin Button, Shakesy. But we did. We lost 1-0 and I remember it really clearly. And I kept saying to the gaffer, and you just said it then, we're in the games. Yeah. The game, well, for me, we're still losing. So there's no point competing and being a 1-0, 2-1, 1-0 loss. We need to start fixing up here because if not, we're going to fall right behind. And as a management team, and I can imagine you guys will go into it and your dad's currently in it, Rusty. You, you always go your first 10 games. Can you get 15 points on the board? And the first four, we've got three. And you think, not doubt, not doubt. But then you go, where are we going with this? Where are we going with this? We need to improve. So you start to fear a little bit. There's a little bit of going, well, are we good enough? Yeah. What do we need to do? Because I think we were one of six, one of five that were part-time still. So we are still fighting a losing battle in terms of that. For me, when we went to Tranmere, that's when I knew we was in a big boy league. It was like, you walk out there and it's proper. Yeah. Because no disrespect to the Eastleys. Eastley, for me, it looks non-league. Gate said, with a running track, it looks non-league. Yes, the stand's vast. Forest Green, we didn't have the luxury of going away, but we had them at home. And then to go to Tranmere, remember the two goal scorers? Yeah, Harry and Graham. Yeah. Harry and Graham. That's not dumb and dumber. I didn't play, Luke. That was the first game I... Ian pulled me before the game. Yeah. And um, sat, sat me in the away dugout and binned me off when we were looking at the big stands. And I was... I kind of thought something might change because we hadn't been winning. But I didn't think I'd been... I didn't think I'd made any bad mistakes, but there was a couple of goals I looked at after and I was like, oh, what my, like, my position was not great. And there was questionable moments in there and I was thinking, right, we weren't winning and that was the change. You had to change something. And yeah. I remember being gutted because I was excited, obviously, to go to Tramier. It was like, Oops. it was the first big, big stand stadium and I'd lasted four games and I was thinking, God, this is going to be a long season sitting in the top of these big stands watching games. Like, but, How was that for you, Rusty? Uh, to start with, I was disappointed because I knew Preston and I thought I'm going to struggle to get back in here. Or I might, I might struggle to get back in here. And he was kind of, he was different. Me and him are so different as goalkeepers. Like we're not too dissimilar height-wise, but he's a lot. He, in fairness to him, he's he's much better in the air. He comes and catches a lot more than me, or did, and and did that when he first came in. But there was other as aspects I thought I was ahead of him on that maybe hadn't come out and I was thinking, right, okay, if I get an offer opportunity, I've got to take it, but it's going to, I'm going to have to be patient here and, and show a good attitude. <laughs> now, of course, listen, it's hard. And then I can imagine you're being involved with Chelsea. You see it day in, day out. It's part of the job that no one likes doing. It's horrible. Of course. It helped but, me. I think it definitely helped me watching the yeah. like going and I think I was out for six or seven games, but I, I remember watching a lot of, of watching the games from a different perspective and going, do you know what? I, I can play in this. And I was watching it. And it's, it's so different when you play in a level of football than when you watch it on the side. Yeah. Like you, you realise, like, oh, God, they've got so much more time. I remember everything being so rushed when I was playing. Yeah. And then, like little things just from watching it. I'd never watched games at that level ever because I'd always been playing. So just coming out and watching it. I was like, right, I can play this level. Like, I am good enough to play this level and just have to be patient. Yeah, of course. And he played really well. He had a great game at Tranmere. He did have a good game. 
He did. We got clean sheet for the, for the first time in in our five games. So are you tough? Yeah, obviously. The manager in Ian, Ian's probably looking at himself, going, "Well, I've made the right decision, made the right call." Yeah. Nani, I'm going to ask you because I think you think we're playing in two seventeen two eighteen season. Do <laughs> so you know the next four games? Next no, yeah, the next four games. Go on, have a guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, Anderlecht. <laughs> 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 no, honestly, Matt, couldn't tell you. We went Woking at home, picked up a draw, and this is Woking that was for me a good team, a very, very, very good team. Good team that year. Yeah, you had right. Kurt, the Ricketts, the Kings, the Betsy's, the Giuseppe Souls, players that knew the level, played it week in, week out. So we've gone. Away to Tranmere, then played Woking at home. So you're thinking four points from your last two games, decent. Then we hit a run. Grimsby, Lincoln, then Bromley. Anyone know the results? I'm just looking at them now. Shipped in three goals every game. Yeah. Heavy. Heavy. Yeah, I remember... I Grimsby. Remember. I remember Grimsby. Yeah. yeah. That, the striker, was it... Uh, but... Oh, well. Then you had Monk, Bogle, then you had Monkhouse on the left hand side that was outstanding. Unbelievable. And you, one you would have played your side, Nanny, innit? The lefty. Yeah. And, and, it was, and it was like angle ball, we jump on you, he gets yeah. it out, he clips it in front of you, and you go, wow, wow. They were, for me, they, they were a cut above the rest. Yeah, yeah. I remember uh, Bogle. I... Patrick Almond. Yeah. yeah. I remember bouncing off Bogle when he didn't even have the ball, and I was thinking like, "Well, right, I need to, I need to get a bit stronger here because can't just rely on like your ability. It's more physical." But like he was doing mad stuff that day, like with the ball as well. Do you know what I mean? So I was like, "All right, they're decent players, but physically as well." Some, someone scored an absolute worldie, didn't it? Was it him that scored? He did. Yeah. Or, yeah. And what's, who was it? Uh, who was the right winger? Little mix, mixed race boy. He was. Yeah. He, went to, yeah. He, oh. stayed, he stayed with them as they went up and yeah. he was quick. He was good. But I, I remember the, the, when we played them, I remember thinking, nah, these are like, different level. Like they were, they could be strong when they needed to be strong. They were kept the ball for fun and they were so, like, you made a mistake at school. Yeah, clinical, yeah. Yeah. But that was, that, yeah, for me, then, then Grimsby then obviously we went to Lincoln away. I just remember, all, I, all I've got in my head is the siren. Constant. We, oh. yeah, we, got, we got battered there, didn't we? I just remember like, I was blowing probably the whole game. We were under the cosh a lot, weren't we? I think we got absolutely battered and 3-1 flattered us. Yeah. yeah. Right. And right. Matty Whitlow right. scored, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, did we go one up or was it going one, one up? One new up, yeah. Yeah, you know, decent. Like, obviously, after Tranmere, decent ground, you're thinking, all right, we can do a bit. But no, nah, I remember as well. I remember watching the long throw-in. I was sitting right at the top of their big stand and I was watching these throw-ins with the siren and I was thinking, I'm quite happy I'm sat at the top of this stand <laughs> rather than flapping at them throwing. It was a hot day as well, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. It was boiling yeah. hot. I just remember just tasting defeat and salt and it was just like, I just wanted the game to end. So we won them yeah. once. Like you said, I think we got away with a 3-1 there. We massively got away. Then we have played. Then we played a team, for me, I think this is a pivotal part of our progression. Because we then went at home to Bromley, even though we lost it 3 2. We played, for me, it showed us as a level, sort of, we've come up together. They weren't too far off us in the National South, and they've done us 3 2. Do you remember the conversation we had the week, the, the, the days after that? Yeah, that was when we went full time, wasn't it? We said we yeah. got home. And it was a, a bit of sweet for me, because obviously it needed to happen. It needed to happen. And the likes of the Montes, the Mazzies, the Courts, Ian, all suffered come the end of it, to be fair, didn't they? Yeah. Uh, it was tough because, now you said it right from the off, yeah? 
You said, if we're going to have to start and we don't sign any players, all right, yeah, no worries. I'll go in the trenches with him. We'll have a tear up together. We'll be the closest unit. You've turned up looking like Don Colioni. Cal's turned up with a leopard print blazer on. Rusty's got his ball. That was what we were about, wasn't it? No disrespect. We won the National South. Yes, we had the two best strikers in the league by a country mile. But we had a nucleus of 10, 12 lads that would have a go week in, week out. Fact. That wasn't enough, was it? No. No, no way near. And it's, and it's such a tough thing to say. You've played at Dagenham now in the National. Cal, you've played in all the shot now Barnet. Unfortunately, camaraderie and togetherness don't cut it. No. Nah, I think when you've got a good team and a good a good environment, obviously it does help, especially depending on your situation, whether like you're in 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 a tough situation or you're doing well. Those kind of things do help, but yeah, it's not enough to just like say, Oh, it's all right, we'll go out as a team, whatever, have a bit of banter and go again next week. Like you you do need more. It's the, it's them vital vital times and moments in the game. That you can you can work hard and be together and whatever, but when you need to show someone the right one, have someone cover you, or you need to score at a certain time or a certain cross or a certain movement, like work hard can't do that. You can work hard to close someone down, but to close them down the right way or to it's them pivotal moments in a game that that little bit of quality that you when we stepped up into the national league that difference. Then teams were doing that and doing that comfortably. And the lads, us boys that were coming up, sort of had that, but were learning. And we just weren't together enough. So we, yeah. The time. It's, it's difficult as well when you start making those changes that we were obviously such a good group. And so together, everyone, like, like you said, after games, as you said it on the last chat, there'd be 10, 15 of us in the bar afterwards. That completely flipped, obviously. Now you've got other players that have come in that don't want to, would, and rightly so, don't want to buy into what was successful for us the year before. And we kind of have to form like this new new group, which is difficult because we've got had our way of doing things and, you know, we played the song before and other people were like, well, no, what, what are you doing? Like, and that was difficult. I think it was, it took a while to kind of get everyone going in the same direction, I think maybe to start with. I think there was a few characters that maybe didn't quite fit what we were trying to do. Well, I, I, I think the, the, the mindset before was we was a non-league club. And I'm not being disrespectful to the personnel within it, but the mindset was you can have a beer on a, on a Friday, you can have a beer on a Saturday, play on a Tuesday, because you're all level pegging. You alluded to no, no disrespect, oh, he's playing in the championship now. Yeah. I mean, so then sort of calibre of personnel that are in the teams and hitting at the top of the table, you see where they go to when they're professional. That mindset had to change. For me, the full-time mindset, it was the right decision. Hands down, it was the right decision. But, and we'll probably allude to it later on in probably five, six games time, it was the end of, of two or three, maybe four or five careers at the club. And they could leave a legacy, especially Ian Anderson, especially Mario Noto, um, Monty to an extent, because what Monty done in the two, three years with us previously was outstanding. Yeah. And it was tough. But I felt that if the club is to progress, it was the only way to go. And it was tough. Do you remember the coach we brought in straight away to assist? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Julian Lewis come in to assist and, and aid it. Because obviously... We've gone to the mornings and Ian's, quite rightly, still working with Carlsberg. So it was tough for Gaffer because I'm saying, yeah, Gaffer, we've done this. And he, the trust was brilliant. But I yeah, don't care. he wouldn't know what you've done. In yeah, you, I don't care who right. you are. I don't yeah. care who you are. There's, I'd be bitter. If I have to sit in an office at yeah. Carlsberg and Ian's doing the session and he's picked, yeah, Gaffer, they've been good, good, this, that and the other. I want to be involved in it. So it was tough. It was hard. But... I think it was the right thing. Wrexham, another big hitter. Do you remember that at home? I do. I played left back and Josh Hill played right back. That was my first game back. It was on my yeah. birthday. Yeah. And again, it's just a one-nil-er. Like, 
Yeah. They scored a header, weren't it? Is it a header? Yeah. Come off his shoulder. Yeah. Um, again, Connor Jennings. Yeah. Yeah. And again, look where he is. Yeah. Uh, we battered in that game. We got peppered. Because I think that's what helped me. Because I made quite a lot of saves. Yeah. And um, I think it kind of bought me a bit of time. I think it was the best game to come back in for. Because I think, yeah, I made loads of saves. Up. I think it was like seven or eight saves. Yeah. We lost one nil. Yeah. And I think that kind of helped with, with the supporters as well, because they were obviously pleased that I was back in and obviously played well. So that helped me. But um, yeah, couldn't have, apart from the score, apart from losing one nil, it was a good game for me to come back into. Yeah. Remember the trip to Torquay? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Two two additions. Who was the two additions? Big Teriyaki sauce. Teriyaki. <laughs> Teriyaki sauce, yeah. Did Clovis come in that game? Yeah. yeah. Moose scored as well, didn't he? Yeah. He did score. He scored an absolute... Good. Yeah. yeah. Belter, along the floor. Oh, this the the <laughs> yeah, I remember just two men. Like... Yeah. Two men. Massive. Moose. I remember... I remember playing against Moose uh, when he was at... I don't know if he was on trial. I remember at Luton that pre-season. And uh, I just remember thinking, this geezer is an arsehole. Like, always fighting me, elbow, like, everything. He was strong in that and was decent. And, like, I was thinking, I just, like, I didn't really get sucked into many, many, like, tussles because I knew, like, it weren't uh, my game. I'd rather outsmart someone or whatever and play my game. But I remember, like, my head kind of going and just wanting to hit him and hurt him. And then he turned up for us and I was thinking... Like, oh, this is good. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know, when players you remember playing against, I thought he turned up, Clovis turned up, and I just thought, like, it's just a bit of steel. Do you know what I mean? You know, like, we brought in obviously uh, Connor, Billy, Howley, and Doey. They're not like physically the most no, imposing. Really, yeah. Yeah. So, like, when you're lining up in the tunnel straight away, you've got Predator, and then you got Teriyaki, <laughs> just like he's bigger than the whole tunnel and if you remember Muzzy's first training session yeah over the fence (laughs) whacking (laughs) balls and then he went to 25 straight after on the way back to the train station (laughs) you pile up the balls like ready for the session (laughs) Muzzy's run out and just smashed all the balls they've gone like that and he's like hitting balls like 50 metres in the air we're like oh Muzzy yeah just love doing whacks (laughs) <laughs> he was like the kid in uh, Mighty Ducks, wasn't he? The knuckle putt. <laughs> I just love whacking him. <laughs> he was a bit of a loose cannon, Mus. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, great, great guy. Like we, we obviously with this chat, like being set up and that, we had a little talk about some of the players and that. Um, good when things are going well, but you know when things aren't so great, he's not like. You know he's just going to be out the back having a fag rather than on the front. Yeah. Scrap it where we are. But yeah. like it's at the time, a good, a good addition. Like, he was, that, that game he came in, the Torquay game, he was unbelievable. Yeah. He was so, he was so unfit that he blew up. Remember, he was so, the last ten. I remember thinking he can't run, but he yeah. was he was still good. He, he was, was, he was putting himself he about and that because I could just. We didn't really have much presence, and then all of a sudden, from goal kick, he's chesting him, and I'm thinking, "Oh, this is ledge. Like, I could just whack this in his area, and he'll bring it down, and it makes my kicking look better as well, rather than it's just flying over everyone's heads." And it was decent. Uh, it was a good addition. It was a big win down at Torquay. Big win, two-one win. Again, that's that was the first win in in five, well in six games. Tranmere was the last one, and then obviously we've gone to Torquay. And it's sort of like you've gone full time, you've lost to Wrexham, yeah, we got peppered, but we're on a new regime. Come on in, let's have a kickstart, let's go again, try and put back to back wins together. And then you play Ultranum at, at home and you lose 1 0 again. And it's, was, it's, it's, was it's, it just it's, a really crap game, Ultranum? Horrendous. I'm not being funny, as an advert for the National League, it was horrendous. Oh, yeah, throw that one in the bin. But obviously, yeah. after a talk here, you think, oh, okay, this is a good one to kind of get another. Yeah. Oh, and they were, they were, and you look at this, when you look back and go, you, you're bottom four, they fit, they, they got relegated, 
They were poor, I remember they were awful. Poor. Yes, and we, did, we didn't beat them all yeah. season. We didn't pick a point up against them all season. And it's no disrespect. We're we're we'll probably allude to the fact of our away form and our home form as we progress, but them sort of games you should be picking up points from. Yeah. Especially yeah. If you talk in, you go, go on then, let's have a little run. Then we go on a run to an extent. We go Macclesfield, Kidding and still Welling. We go away to Macclesfield, away to Kiddy, and at home to Welling. And we pick up five points. Yeah, we drew. Four against Macclesfield, which yeah, was, I've got to be honest, we played highly to the right hand side. We played a team, in my opinion, to be regimental and not get beat. Yeah. And to be fair, they we went. He said, didn't they? He was decent. He hit the post. Yeah. It was regimental and we didn't get beat. Then you go to, away to Kidderminster, who, in fairness to them, were a good team. We're a good team. Now that little Maxwell, who's obviously now solid, I was just good player. Luke Maxwell, sent midfielder. They had the boy, the talk here, I can't think of his name. Good, technical, lovely little footballers. They got the St. Albans goalie, played in goal. Yeah. Okay. And then we went home to Welling. Again, teams that we need to beat. And we thought, OK, so we started the full time. We've won two, drawn two, lost two. Actually, we might be seeing a sea change. Remember the Welling game? I can't remember Welling. Nah. Two oh, off. Yeah. I've got a result here, but who scored? Oh, the top of my head. I'm not sure. I don't I'm remember sure. having a do in that game. It doesn't stand out. Do you remember what happened then, though? So, obviously, in that period, Ian's gone. Yeah. How was that for you? Take me out the camera. Yeah, it was like you said. It was it was just strange. I think when we made the change to going to full time, obviously brought in a few more. Well, we signed like half the Barnet team that won the league before, no? Dave Stevens come in. He was in and around it. Joe Devera now is in the building. Charlie so, McDonald was there. Charlie was in the building. Connor as well, and. Yeah. Uh, like you said, just a dynamic change. And I think because of the what they've been and what they, some of them, what they've been and what they've done in their careers, they didn't like it. They thought they'd probably come in, like, have a bit of a chilled run, part-time, pick up the money and then start their off-the-field stuff. And then it was like, all of a sudden, like, right, three mornings a week. And a few of them sort of kicked off and didn't really like it. And it was just a bit, it weren't a good, it weren't a good atmosphere in the change room at the time, I remember. Um, was this sort of, split, sort of the conference national South boys and in the new lot? Uh, no, I wouldn't. It say. Really, no, it wasn't really. It wasn't really that. It was just. It was maybe, obviously, with them coming in and like more like trying to go against the club. Do you know what I mean? And it's like, you know, lads, like we've like been here a few years and that built up to this. Yeah. And then you're coming in, you've been here two minutes, something changes, you even, and you're just all against it. And it's like, well, no, I'm not getting, getting paid yeah. for it. And, that. and you're like, yeah, just a bit of a bit of a. It was different, wasn't it? We knew things were changing. Like, I think a few of us were a bit uncertain what the future would be like. I think I was quite worried that I could only train one day a week. And I was thinking, right, right, this is. That was. Like it's quite stressful. I was thinking this is going to be difficult for me, missing out on training sessions. Um, and even, for, even for you, Luke, taking over, and it's like well, that was it? some. I took the order shot game, and that was sort of a rehearsal for me. Yeah, my first game was Geisley, and I listen. I've been here now five years. Good I'll suit. Do, boy, boy. What's that, mate? First time you rocked up in a suit, didn't you, on the bus? And I, you know why, Rusty? I look back and I go, why did I do that? And do you know what? It's You did look nice. I, Yeah, you did. Didn't you put it on on, on the coach as well? I honestly I look at it and go, I don't know, I had to think and I and I've done podcasts this whole eight weeks, I'd do so much different. Yeah. So much different because I had to feel like no, I'm the manager. Yeah. When I, I text you, when as soon as it yeah. happened, you left the left the group chat, and I was like, "What do I call you now?" Like, <laughs> yeah. No, and this is it. And it's like I'm talking to managers now that are going through the same sort of scenario, finishing their playing career, 
and moving into the assistant first team role, it is tough. Yeah. It is tough because no disrespect. How many times have we been in Camden? Must four and <laughs> Mark Mayer. Mark Mayer, and all the little things that we had, all the all the nights out because of the success we had as a club and a, as a group. Did I have to put it on the back burner? I felt I had to. Yeah. I didn't. I shouldn't have. But it was tough. It was tough because outside people are looking at Dan. Why has he got the job? Why has he got the job? He ain't done nothing. And to be fair, they're spot on. And I knew that, that, that my first job could be my last job. Mm. So I had to buy into it. And we all know, we won't allude to it, there was issues within the camp. But and people went against me or whatever, which is fine. I totally get that. But for me, it was tough to try and get a management team together that I trusted and I'm looking here. We added um, we added Jason Goodlift to the to the management team. Yeah. I'm going to say in, in we're at Geisley now. We drew one all and we battered them. They scored a penalty in the last minute. Yeah. We absolutely yeah. battered them. Yeah. It was. Yeah. It was it was gutting because I thought if I can start the regime and win, perfect. But for me, yeah, it was it was it was tough. It was tough. Yeah. Do you know, I, I remember it was we for us, exactly like you say, we've gone, especially us three, like me, Cal and Rusty and the boys that have been there with you for like the last two, three, four, whatever we've been before, two or three, four years. It had gone from like, look, we, you ha you're on a level with someone, like we was on a level with you as a player, sort of assistant, but a mate. And then you go to being gaffer, it was like, do we now, like, treat you as a gaffer? Do we treat you as a mate? Do we treat you as a player? It was like, not how we treat you, but like, sometimes you lose yourself and think, yeah. like you'd banter, banter you or do yeah. something. And like, we can't tie shoelaces together now, can we? Like, that's what I was yeah. going to do. <laughs> like, not like, I don't know, it was weird. It was weird. Yeah, I know what you mean. Someone in training, you'd be like, oh, Luke. And everyone's like, who's Luke? And you're like, uh, gaffer? Uh, <laughs> do you know what I mean? I had the best job at the club. I had the best job at the club, assistant manager, by a country mile, because I can go to you lot and go, Ian, I don't know what he doesn't even know what he's going on about. I'll play you. Do you know what I mean? So, and then I'll get my arm around you. But, now nah, I'm 100% with you with regards to it was weird. The environment was weird. And it was. It was mid-season. Mid and not only that, you've lost the gaffer. And the, 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 the respect you lot, and I know you lot love him as much as I do. He's an unbelievable bloke first, and I thought he was a very, very, very good manager. He knew his strengths. He knew what he needed to do. I lost the best mate in Maz, yeah. because, and he was massive. Yeah. He was yeah. Massive. yeah, yeah. And that was even weirder. Like we've obviously been in football now, seeing managers get like they didn't get sacked. Do you know what I mean? It's not yeah. like see you later. It's kind of like yeah. yeah. It's almost like unfair, wasn't it? Like, and this is it, and it felt like the goalie coach went. Yeah, this is it. Because I was now taking sessions. Yeah, so cool. he do a with us, wouldn't he? He would do the games. Yeah. But then not to start with, like he did a few, and then he stopped doing them. But yeah. I was taking sessions that I was, so I was playing, but also taking the goalies. So it was been me, Preston, yeah. which was difficult because. He wasn't playing. I'm playing. I'm designing the training sessions with a couple of young kids. And he was a ledge, to be fair, Preston. He was quality. But that was difficult because I found it's hard to coach, not to coach, but it's hard to put on a session thinking, right, I know what I need for Saturday. I know I need to do this. But also, they don't need that. You so I'm like them. sacrificing a little bit of what I'm doing to make sure that they're enjoying it. But then it, that, that was tough. Yeah. I remember you said you used to plan sessions that Preston didn't like, so you could go, look, that's why you weren't playing, mate. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that sounds definitely sounds like something. He goes, I'm going to have to speak to the manager if this carries on. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember that? So, guys, he won all, we battered them. Do you remember the first FA Cup game? I'm looking at it here, Hornchurch. I can't really yeah. remember it. I remember it clearly. They were flying in their league. Yeah. Flying. It wasn't, I come, it wasn't easy, was it? Now, it wasn't easy, and the scoreline suggests that 2 1 win, but it was you, you've always got that sort of banana skin 
It was nice to progress. It was nice to progress. They, they were good in that game. They were good. They were a good team in their in their league at the time. And then, do you remember who came to town after that? Gates said. Oh, we got we were two 0 down after like five minutes. Yeah. Two one on ones really early. I remember because I was thinking like, I have not touched the ball and I let in two goals. Yeah. Two one on ones. Yeah. yeah. We come back to 2-0 and then let... And they beat us 3-2. Yeah. yeah. Again, One just... Kicks again. Kicks in the teeth and that. Like, I think against the, the bigger, better teams, when we got battered, like you said, we never got done like fours and fives, but we got beat. And then the other games were just like the odd goal here and there. And like you said, we weren't scoring a lot. And obviously, we've seen the stats and that. For goals scored, we were like the second bottom in the league. Yeah. Goals 44 continue. goals scored. And you think we scored, what, in the last three games, we've scored six, which is probably like a good chunk, do you know what I mean? It's a massive chunk, yeah. Yeah, it's and then we were like, well, probably, we, we know the stats and that, we were seventh in the league for goals conceded. And when I saw that, I just, again, it brought back memories where some games we were just, I felt like we were just playing to not lose because we, we just couldn't get a goal, ball in the goal. But so, then there's games where you score two goals at home and you still lose, you're like, yeah, kicking a tee. It was so different to what it was like the year before because I thought the year before we knew we could score and it was such a, we knew, I knew if I let in a goal, I wasn't that worried. I was thinking, right, we're going to get, we're going to have loads of chances here. I don't think there was many games in the Conference South where we didn't score. I know, obviously, it's a different level, but you had that feeling of it didn't worry you that you went 1-0 down. Obviously, it was frustrating or whatever, but you were like, we know we can get back in it. The Conference, or the National League year was like, as soon as we conceded, I was thinking, oh, like, we're not going to score. Like, we're not going to score here. We we got everything right until the final third, and we just, I just don't remember their keepers making enough saves or whatever, and we, it was... I wasn't making loads of saves either. It was like kind of, we just didn't really have any. We had Marias, Moose, Jamie Lucas in the building. Very, all quite similar. Yeah. Now, the cabbage. The yeah. same stuff. Yellow car. <laughs> we, we, um, we considering when you had likes of losing Leanne Goal yeah. was, was massive. To have him in the National League would play a massive part. I don't think Junior was fit enough either, was he? Like, no, listen, he, he, he wasn't the, the same as I played with him the year after, back in the Conference South level, and he was just a different animal. In that. Remember, he went off, didn't he? Because obviously, he went off and done the Scotland sort of thing. He tried to do trials here, trials there, and we picked him back up later on. So he didn't really have... He no, needs a pre-season, yeah. Junior. And yeah. when he's fit... He's powerful. He's outstanding. You see that when, at St. Albert. I had with him like, only half a season. He was unplayable. I've never this is seen it. anything like it. Yeah, it was incredible. But, and I played a shape that probably didn't suit him. I played the one up top. And no disrespect now, if, if he was to play in the team that I have now, in the two up top, he'd be a handful. Yeah. He'd be an absolute handful. But you can't play him up on his own. You can't yeah. play him on the side. So I probably didn't do him any favours. But he, don't, he wasn't fit enough to. He wasn't fit enough to come in and make an impact. Really, I don't think. It's true. Do you remember? Do you remember the next FA Cup game? Yeah. I, do. Real. <laughs> I didn't play. Over the both legs, the Northwich. Northwich Victoria. I remember away. Did we warm up at the back of the field or something? You did. I warmed up on the pitch. Yeah, we had to go behind the stand. Yeah, in the cow fields. I think you said I weren't playing in that, and I was like, was it? Was it the first round? That was the first round. Yeah, and I just thought, like, I don't know, I was just raging because obviously I knew how much the FA, FA Cup's good anyway, but yeah. how much it meant to, not just to me, but to the club to get through, do you know what I mean? Like, the years before and that, like, getting to the first round was massive, and now we only need to play one game to get there, so we're thinking we can get to the second round here. Thinking that as well. That we that never... was a, yeah, that was a draw, wasn't it? They had that big meathead, he went to Chester at the back. Astles, the centre half, yeah. Jordan Whitham. They had, they had four or five that from that year just went bing, 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 bing. Yeah, they yeah. went to Barrow. What's that mean? They the left footer that went to Barrow. Yeah, Jordan Williams. He's a good player, yeah, he scored. Oh, then he went on to Rochdale. Then he obviously, yeah, he, he had a great, they had a good squad. They had a very yeah. good squad. 
And then I thought, this be true, I thought replay, all right. And then I just remember I didn't play again and we lost. And I was just, I was just angry. One, for not playing, but two, because of like, the chance to get to the second round. One, Do you remember, because obviously the draw was done. Yeah. We knew. Do you remember who we had? Uh, I don't remember. Northampton. Oh, I do remember. <laughs> yeah. So obviously, we've gone, we've gone the FA Cup, Northwich Victoria. We'll jump two games where we've then gone, come here. They, I remember it set piece. Moose got lost by Astle back post. I thought Dave was going to head it. Yeah. And just thought I was coming for it. And just on. left it for each other. Really. Yeah. That was, to be fair, I thought that that hurt me. That only because of the, the like you said, in the South, you had to play three games to get to the first round. And the first round meant something. It was like, wow, you got to the first round. I think we may have just gone, oh, we beat Alice in Church. We were in the first round. Let's get to the second or get to the third. We've got an opportunity here. Yeah. And to get beat by them hurt us. 